Welcome to Outside the Fam. I'm Jamie Parker, and if you're wondering why I'm hanging out here in Warwick, Rhode Island, well, we're at the Family Friendly Launch. It is owned by Patriots great Ty Law, and it's good for all ages. If you want to find out about this place and Ty Law, stick around. Outside the Fam is next. Two thousand nineteen has already become a year Ty Law will never forget as the New England Patriot legend was recently honored as one of the newest members of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Law played 15 seasons in the NFL, 10 of them for the Patriots, and was part of three Super Bowl championships. Today, Ty has settled in the New England area with his family, including five children, and has become a businessman. He is the founder of Launch Trampoline Parks, a venture currently consisting of 22 franchises, with many more either under construction or being planned in the near future. We recently traveled to the headquarters for launch in Warwick, Rhode Island to speak with the Patriot all-time great. First, I just want to know all the logistics about launch. If you can give me the whys, the where's, the how, so how you got started. Uh, you know what, it was it was by chance. I, I got to admit that I, I didn't come into this business saying I, I want to own a trampoline park. I was actually about to go another route uh, into another franchise in the food industry and uh, Rob Arnold, who is my business partner right now, he was doing a job for me. Um, at my house doing a big deck so uh, we became you know fast friends uh, then because it was a pretty extensive job he was there for a while and we were just talking just regular just just casual said you know you like you ever seen these trampoline parts because he knew what I was about to get into and uh, I said no I never heard of it he said well it'll kill it up here man I mean if you, if you do that you I mean I'm telling you it, it, it's awesome I took my family so it was just casual conversation so my son who was about uh, nine, eight, eight, nine years old at the time. He's like, I want to go to one of those. You know, kids always mm -hmm. in grown folks conversation. Oh, yeah. And I said, okay, I'm going to take it. So first of all, I couldn't find it. Oh, Terrible no. location. Yep. It smelled like feet. Ooh. You know what I mean? So hey, don't don't, don't it smell fresh in here? Yes, I like That's it. right. It yeah, we we fresh. we ain't gonna have feet. We cover up lunch. the feet. Yeah, we cover up that up around here. <laughs> you know what I mean? But we, we we try to keep it clean. So anyway, we came in. My kids had a good time, but my. Uh, youngest didn't because she was not able to jump with my two oh. older kids so it was just oh, I yeah. didn't have a good time myself because what is it for me to do but sit on this cold bench mm -hmm. so you know my time was up my two oldest kids had a pretty decent time but as I was leaving it would just bust loads of kids coming in coming, coming yeah. in so I'm like what whoa I know what I just paid <laughs> you know what <laughs> I mean so I like the light bulb went yeah. off in my head I said it might be something to this so I start being like okay $12, $12, $12. I started counting $12. I was like, How's your math? Yeah, you exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty good at math. So mm -hmm. I said, you know what? I'm going to do some research on this. So I just kind of went in on my own oh, wow. uh, to these uh, different trampoline parks right. around the country mm -hmm. to kind of get a better grasp of what this industry is because I was kind of, you know, blown away just by the sheer amount of people coming to mm -hmm. this place full of trampolines. So let's talk about the unit. The first one opened and when? Uh, November the 23rd, Black Friday, uh, 2012. Black Friday, that's when you want yeah. to drop your kids off and go shopping, right? Exactly. I mean, perfect exactly. timing. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. Is there a cap to reach a certain amount and then you're gonna, that will be pretty much it or? Uh, you got to go pretty much, you know, year to year and see what okay. the trend is and what the industry is doing. So you have to take all that in, in, into consideration. But we do have an exit strategy in our head, okay, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. But right now, we're just going to continue to grow. Because you're just one man to kind of make visit all these different places, right? And if you say 22, you got 12, that's... that's Right, yeah. But I mean, yeah. you know, myself and Rob, we couldn't have done this uh, right. by ourselves. I mean, we have a hell of a team downstairs on the ground working right now. We have a discovery day today, so we have potential franchisees coming right. in to check out the park. So if you happen to see a couple of people in the background walking through, those mm -hmm. are potential franchisees. So we try to do that and host a show what we're about. Mm -hmm. uh, we introduce everybody to the team. Um, we have our own algorithm as far as where we think a successful park will be, especially when you're targeting a certain area. So uh, it's a whole lot that goes into it. Stay with us on Outside the Fame as we get an up-close look at the family fun to be had at launch. Outside the Fame is presented by Scholar Athletes, supporting academic achievement through athletics.
I've been involved in the zone for the past two years. And it's been a great experience. It's just basically another opportunity to be successful at your school. At three o'clock, I want to go straight home. When I go home, I just want to sleep, either play video games or chill with my friends, basically. The zone gives me an opportunity for at least an hour in there or maybe two hours before school to get your work done and be done with it, basically, by the deadline. The staff, they always come around, tell people, come in the zone, do your work. It's always good to have someone on your back to push you whenever you're down or someone to talk to whenever it's needed. Talk to me about your role here at Launch. Evolution, innovation, making sure that as our business grows, we've got the newest, coolest, greatest things. And so Rob decided to show us all the latest and coolest things at Launch. All right, here we are in the arcade, the noisiest area. Oh, it's crazy. But some fun games. Oh, yeah. We've got everything from prize redemption games, you can win tickets, you can go earn prizes, we've got car racing, basketball. What's the most popular game? We've got a big prize redemption game where you can win a monster bouncy ball. The claw. The claw. I'm an old school gal, so Space Invaders look pretty good to me, as it did to a certain Patriot legend. Talk about the facilities. It's not just a trampoline park. I mean, behind us, we got the ninja course. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, what? I mean, but you know what? The, the, and it, that it, show is very successful. So exactly. So kudos for you guys for putting this in here as well. Uh, it, you have to evolve because you can't just come in and put it in the back of a warehouse and say, you know, I got a trampoline park. Right. You, I mean, that's not going to get it anymore. You have to have other attractions. So, you know, from the time we started back in 2012 to where we are now, as far as our attractions have changed. You know, now we have laser tag, we have virtual reality, we have our own pizza concept called Crave. Uh, we have the Ninja Course, the basketball. Uh, so many things have changed. It's kind of like, like a computer. You know how you go in and buy a computer and think you got it and, and next year it's obsolete, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. You have to be... So you're keeping up with the times we, yeah, and what's, to, what's yeah, popular. Right, I saw right, gla Gladiator yeah, stuff exactly. over there. And, and you have to stay uh, ahead of the curve. What's some of your favorite things? Uh, just the energy within the park. If, if you come in to any launch, you're always going to have music playing uh, in the background. You're never going to... It's, it's, it's just a certain type of energy, a certain type of lighting, you know, feng shui that we have here, you know what I mean? And if you compare us to... Uh, a lot of the other parks where it's just going to be a bright light. We try to focus on the attraction itself, so it's a certain light that hits it. It makes this, this is an individual uh, attraction here. The way the lighting is, oh, this is an attraction, this is an attraction. Even though it's all under the same roof, it makes you feel like this is a totally different experience for every attraction that we have. But we came to launch to do some launching. But before you get on those trampolines, you need the right footwear. So I've got just the ankle socks. Oh yeah, but you told they, me these are, the, these are the ones. You've got the launch pros. These are yeah. the pros. Okay. All right, is there a certain technique that I need to know anything about the trampoline? You just, you just jump. Woo! You ready? Yeah. Oh, yes! <laughs> that was good. I'm not doing that, for the record. <laughs> Dodgeball and trampoline sounds like fun, especially when you have Ty Law as your teammate. We've had some of your former teammates actually mm -hmm. come in here and uh, I don't know, try out some of the skills. Dodgeball. Oh yeah, yeah. Who, yeah. Who's been here to help you out with your well, support? You know what? You? Teddy bruski has been here. Uh, uh, Troy Brown, Tom Brady. Mm -hmm. um, they all come. You know what? Who's pretty good at some of the stuff you have here? I would say Troy Brown still has his mobility to be an old guy. You know what I mean? So <laughs> Troy, he's older than me, but he's he's holding it down out there. And uh, I would say the best on the Ninja can, course, yeah. and I guess that's why he's a Hall of oh, Famer. Ninja. Curtis Martin. Get Curtis Martin. Here. He's in great shape. So when we go to different cities, I reach out to my compadres, mm -hmm. you know, Man Affair, and they come and enjoy it, and then they come to support. And you know, just showing up is big because uh, you know it brings a lot of attention. Uh, 
to it. Uh, it's fun, it's active, and um, it's, it's just awesome. We will have more fun and Patriots talk with Ty Law when we return on Outside the Fame. I've been involved in the zone for the past two years. And it's been a great experience. It's just basically another opportunity to be successful at your school. At three o'clock, I want to go straight home. When I go home, I just want to sleep, either play video games or chill with my friends, basically. The zone gives me an opportunity for at least an hour in there or maybe two hours before school to get your work done and be done with it basically by the deadline. The staff, they always come around, tell people come in the zone, do your work. It's always good to have someone on your back to push you whenever you're down or someone to talk to whenever it's needed. After three years at Michigan, Ty Law was selected by the Patriots in the first round in the 1995 NFL Draft, 23rd overall. The following fall, Law played in his first NFL game against the Cleveland Browns, then coached by Bill Belichick. Belichick joined Bill Parcell's staff in New England the following year, a season that saw the Patriots go all the way to the Super Bowl before losing to the Green Bay Packers. From then through 2004, Law was a fixture in the New England secondary five-time Pro Bowler, two-time All-Pro, and oh my God, the interception machine right here. I mean, you're, you're 53, right? Mm -hmm. Still stands at 24th all-time. Right. Still, and you've mm -hmm. retired, when did you retire? 2009. 2009. I, knew 2009, that. I yeah. wanted you to say yeah. before me. Oh, yeah, 2009. <laughs> 2009. I've been, I've been and out a while. And he's still looking good. He still I've been, can play a little while. Yeah, you've been out a little while, but still, you, still that some of your, your accolades still stand, which is very impressive. I mean, every. I feel good about my, my, my playing career, but most importantly, you know, I was part of a winning organization that's still yes, winning. So, yeah. you know, I take great pride in the fact oh. that, uh, you know, I helped build something mm -hmm. that's still continuing. The dynasty. That's still continuing mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, move in the right direction, similar to what I did here with my company. Mm -hmm. We built something from ground zero. Yeah. You know, not saying that the Patriots was ground zero, but if you look at uh, it was pretty much ground okay, zero. Yeah. Oh, well, Sorry. You, she said that I didn't. No, no. But anyway, when you, they, when you look they at the old Foxborough Stadium winning. to where it is yeah, now, no. and that's how I look at launch. Yeah. You know, for the first launch compared to where we are now, it's a, it's been an amazing uh, process and yeah. an amazing journey. Yeah, three Super Bowls, mind you. Mm -hmm. uh, but three different coaches, too, with the Patriots. Mm -hmm. Parcells, Carroll, and Belichick. But it, it, it was awesome because when you, you're talking about Parcells, who's like a master mm -hmm. manipulator of the mind, mm -hmm. so he yeah. gets you. He gets the best and out of you by. Minded, yeah. He's defensive minded, but he knows how to push those buttons the yeah. right way yeah. to get you to compete. Yeah. Now it can go the other way as well, so he can push those buttons. Was he able to push yours? Oh, he he, yeah. he tried to, but he you did. know I'm, I'm from Aliquippa, so it's a little <laughs> bit tougher for me because anything that I've seen in college or the pros, yeah. it was never tougher than where I came from oh, in okay. Alabama. So I've heard every four letter word that you can yeah, possibly yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. I can be called everything, so that's not gonna get to me that way, but the way to challenge me was saying that I can't do something. For instance, oh, okay. um, we had a game, yeah, it was 96, we were playing against the Dallas Cowboys. Okay. So Coach Parcells would always, like the whole week he would ride me, ride me. I'm like, would you please go coach somebody else? You know what I mean? But he was like, this, yeah. he was like, I, you, you gonna play against somebody that's not scared of you this time? Oh, they don't give a damn about Ty Law, this guy. He, and he was talking about, of course, yeah. the great Michael Irvin. And you know how physical he was because okay. he claimed that I was a bully. He said, you try to bully people, but I guarantee you won't bully this one. Mm -hmm. We gonna see who's the bully this week and okay. just on me, on me, on me. So Michael Irvin had had a great game against Aeneas Williams, okay. who's also a Hall of Famer, mm -hmm. prior to. And he said, now you see what he did to Aeneas Williams? It was like nine catches for like, like 200 something okay. yards. Yeah. And he said, let me tell you something. You're damn sure no Aeneas Williams, so what do you think he's gonna do to you? So that right there, oh, wow. you know, yeah. turned it on. And you know, I, I, I had a dislike that week for Aeneas Williams. You know, because, <laughs> and then I really hated Mike Irvin going into yeah. the game. So yeah. he had me going in there with such animosity 
-hmm. towards Michael that I had to play my best game. Right. I said, and then when I looked at the game and I looked at the stats, I said, there's no way in hell <laughs> <laughs> that is that you're gonna beat you're me for 200 that. yards you know what i mean and so that's not going to happen so you know i was totally locked in and focused and mm -hmm. by coach parcells challenging me the way he did and pushing those buttons uh i don't know how he knew that mm -hmm. that's how i'm cut mm -hmm. you know i love to prove someone wrong and it worked out and i ended up having one of the breakout but games of my career and uh like i said de 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 defensive player of the week i had two interceptions uh you know you know, I like to take pride in getting an interception off of a Hall of Fame quarterback. Yeah. So, you know, Troy Eggman was one of those, you know, it was one of those games where I got him twice. Mm -hmm. And um, and it was awesome. So now people start really paying attention, you know, a little bit because I had, you know, a great game against one of the, you know, best teams out there. You know, you need somebody, you know, to mm -hmm. push you to never get, you know, too ahead of yourself. I mean, he even told me in training camp one time, he said, you know what, Law, you're going to be the first first round of NFL history to get cut <laughs> at training camp. That's what he told me. I'm like, you know, oh, that's it was not, it, that's so unrealistic, though. I mean, you but know it got what? in your head, right? Well, yeah, yeah. especially when he had the, yeah. you don't pass the conditioning test. You know, he had the, 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 the right. bus sitting there, you know. So <laughs> oh, if you don't God. pass the condition Taunting test, him. yeah, and say, OK, if you don't pass the condition yeah. test, get on the bus because you're gone. You right. know what I mean? So he did those little mental challenges, yeah. you know, like that. And it really it really got to you, you know what I mean? And, you know, either you played. Or, or you didn't. He right. was going to find a way to get you off the field if you couldn't, you know, live up to the expectations that he had for you or for the team. Well, we're all pretty thankful because he did right. definitely get the best out of you. Right. How about the, who was the best dressed back then? Best, best dressed? Dress. And this is, this is 100%, I'm being honest. Okay. The law dog. <laughs> Oh, yeah, the law dog. Really? I, 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 I used to be clean. I used you to be clean. I used to be clean, Jamie. I used to be clean now. <laughs> I used to be clean. Stay with us. Stay with us for more Outside the Fan with Pro Football Hall of Famer Ty Law. Stay with us for more Outside the Fan with Pro Football Hall of Famer Ty Law. Athletes, founded by Suffolk Construction Chairman and CEO John Fish, partners with public high schools to help close the opportunity gap for thousands of students in grades 9 through 12 across the Commonwealth. Scholar athlete programs support success in school as well as success in life. Today we meet the Executive Director of Scholar Athletes, Daphne Griffin. This year is our 10th anniversary. To be able to have a decade under our belt of graduates and seeing young people move on, see the organization grow, and to work with these zone members. We have the privilege, and it is a privilege, of working with some of the most amazing young people in the country. The heart of our work are the zones. These are dedicated spaces in each of the high schools that we work in, and we're in 24 high schools across the Commonwealth. We're leveraging athletics to connect them to the power of their education and how really that's gonna determine their future. Our staff work very closely with them around their social emotional development, making sure that they have a sense of team, but in the classroom and have a sense of team in their community. We're trying to build a community of learners. The success of young people in any community has to happen through public-private partnerships. We don't want cost to be a barrier for young people to access these great opportunities. And so when we do have those partnerships, those are the ones that we relish and cherish and make sure that they continue you know, to remain in place, and they have for 10 years, and it's just exciting what the next 10 years is gonna offer us around our partnerships. Ty Law was a standout on three Patriots teams that eventually became Super Bowl champions. Perhaps his greatest game came in the 2003 AFC Championship game against the Colts. Hey, Manny, I remember that 2003 game. We three interceptions mm -hmm. against him in one game. I'm sure he was a little afraid of you. <laughs> you, you know what? He had to challenge me and actually it was probably, it, it was it was definitely had to be a mm -hmm. mutual respect because I, I always went into the game with the utmost respect mm -hmm. for Peyton Manning and who I was covering and Marvin Harrison, mm -hmm. you know. Oh, yeah. Marvin okay. Harrison is a Hall of Famer 
right now. Peyton Manning is a future Hall of Famer, so you knew that when you played against right. him. So my mentality going in is, you know, kill or be killed. Mm -hmm. Because if I didn't go out there and put my best foot forward and I they, I was gonna be on the highlights at the end of the day, mm -hmm. and that was one of my worst fears yeah. when I was playing. I did not wanna go through a whole week before I get to redeem myself. Yeah. And don't, then please don't get beat on the bye week. Because <laughs> oh now you got two weeks for this to And then you'd have to hear you. it in the locker room too. Oh, I mean, those coaches man. were brutal. Oh, we yeah. hear stories about inside when there was no media around, like some oh, of the exactly. stuff they used to say to you guys. And you know who was the worst editor of all time? Who? Bill Belichick. Really? Yeah, because he don't, he never edits the highlights. So not only do you got to see it all over the national media, you got to come into the locker room and the meetings, and then you got Coach Belichick up there with his wand yeah. and his version of how you stunk up oh, the joint, like, <laughs> how he saw if, it. Even if you won by 20 or something, oh, man. he's, he's still, still, just he's still bringing up the low light. So you know what? You know, you was trying to stay off that yeah. screen too because right. now it gets a little personal because everybody <laughs> laughing and, you know, <laughs> Belichick loved to rewind it real slow and then see you, get, you, know, you know, he put it in slow-mo. So it's like, right. man, you. I, I was always trying to avoid that. Right. <laughs> what about the chemistry of those mm -hmm. teams back then? I mean, you guys seem so tight. I mean, some of those guys are still your best buds, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. I mean. Any time that you've been through as much as as we have together, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. uh, winning championships, you know, not winning, and right. we just had a certain chemistry. We always, we we would compete against each other mm -hmm. on some of the silliest things. So you drove one another because you're so competitive. A yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we were always. No one would ever sit down. I mean, when we we had the best time in the locker room, whether we we're playing cards, dominoes, but when it's time to step out mm -hmm. on the field, yeah. we were there to work. But we would still have fun, whether it's meetings, even drinking water. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a competition. <laughs> what? How does that have a competition? Because if you didn't have a gallon of water <laughs> and you didn't pick it up and hydrate, because yeah. we like, if you ain't hydrating, yeah. if I say, hey, Jamie, yeah. hydrate. and I start drinking my water, you Can damn I have to sure. Challenge you, you, you? No, no, you, you don't just, challenge me. You just got to drink yours and have oh, a sip too. You know, so, so we you call take it. Care so of one right, another. so we call yeah. it getting the edge. You know what I mean? So if, if someone's in there getting a little extra sweat on or extra mm -hmm. run after practice, you know, you look over there. You know, and it's always Willie McGinnis. You know, clowning. <laughs> I'm getting the edge on you. I'm gaining on you, oh, you know, and then so awesome. so you got to go out there and just yeah. you know, get a couple extra yeah. runs in. But it, the water thing was crazy. Everyone had a gallon That's of water, so funny. you know, next to them. And if one goes up, about 20 guys go up. <laughs> you just got to take a couple sips. The NFL's newest Hall of Famer is just as competitive today as he was during his playing days. But can he joust as well as he can play football? This is all in fun, but I'm about to beat the hell out of Jamie. I don't think so. <laughs> Going down time. And I know this he's going to claim he's got some sort of back but you know problem. What? You're going to push them buttons. I'm going to pull them apart. Don't, don't push right them buttons. Go in here hot, Jamie. Go in here hot. Go in here. To find a launch location nearest you, or if you're interested in franchising opportunities, check out launchtrampolinepark.com. All right, listen up, launchers. Spread the word about Ty's complete success here at launch. Absolutely. Coming to a city near you. All launchers, come check us out. Love to have you. Let's go, Ty. Hey! <laughs>